Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books are sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. It's December 8th, and on this day in 1940, the Chicago Bears unleashed fury upon Washington's football team in the greatest beatdown in NFL history. A capacity crowd of 36,000 packed Washington's Griffith Field for the NFL championship game between the visiting and slightly favored Bears and their hometown team. Now, it is important to note that these two teams had played each other three weeks prior, and what happened at the end of that game and what was said after that game had a big impact on what happened in this game. In the regular season meeting between these two, Washington won 7-3, but a controversial no-call on an apparent pass interference in the end zone on the final play of the game sent Bears coach George Hallis into a rage. He and the players talked after the game about the missed call being the difference in the game. Washington coach George Marshall heard about the protests and called the Bears a bunch of crybabies and said the Bears were only a first-half team. When those words got back to Hallis and his players, it was hard to contain their rage, and that fueled what happened on December 8, 1940. Here's Coach Hallis several years later remembering that day. And the pep talk before that game was of no consequence. All we had to do was repeat the fact that George Marshall called us crybabies and then and even that because they went up there, went out on the field really psyched up. The Bears unbottled their fury on the second play of the game as quarterback Sid Luckman handed the ball to Bill Osmansky, who scampered down the sideline for a 68-yard touchdown run. And the route was on. Chicago led 28-0 at the half. The Bears' defense was impenetrable, allowing only 22 rushing yards and picking off Washington quarterback Sammy Ball eight times in the game, running three of those back for touchdowns, all in the third quarter. The Bears finished with 500 yards in total offense, 382 of that on the ground. Their seven rushing touchdowns is still the most ever in a playoff game and the 73 points still stands as the most points ever scored by an NFL team, and the margin of victory is the greatest in American team sports history. Interesting fact, the game was the first NFL title game to be broadcast nationwide on the radio and is credited as being one of the top 10 games that mattered in building professional football to what it is today. Also on this day in sports history, in 1961, Philadelphia's Wilt Chamberlain scored 78 points and grabbed 43 rebounds in a triple overtime loss to the L.A. Lakers. That's it for today. More tomorrow on This Day in Sports History. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. 
But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.